Hello everybody and welcome to this video in our series about graph data science. In this video we're going to learn about applications of graph data science and how those applications fit into a wider pipeline. So let's first have a look at some of the applications. So on the screen here we can now see lots of different ways that we can use graph data science. So we could use it for fraud, so perhaps we're trying to find like patterns of fraud or people who are working together to commit fraud against an insurance company perhaps. Uh, or if we move across maybe we're trying to work out like how do we find the duplicate entities or duplicate people uh, that are in our uh, in our graph and we're going to use a disambiguation approach to try and help us with that uh, or equally we could be using a personalized recommendation approach so maybe we're trying to use uh, a similarity algorithm to find out which people are similar to each other so we can make recommendations based on people who are similar to you uh, or maybe we're looking for a cluster of similar users and we're going to make recommendations based on people in the same cluster uh, and the way that these applications are used tends to fit um, this evolution that you can see on this diagram here. So it could be if we start on the left-hand side, we're using it for decision support and knowledge graph, over to the right-hand side, which is more of a future technique of graph native learning, where we're applying machine learning techniques directly on graphs. And then there are a series of steps in the middle as, as well, which we'll go through one by one. Uh, so starting with the knowledge graph approach, so here is this is where graph search and graph queries fit in. And we're trying to help a domain expert or perhaps an AI system to to answer a question. Uh, and it could be that we've got deceptively simple queries. So perhaps we're doing something like collaborative filtering, where we're saying, I've got a user, I want to find out uh, who also bought a product that they bought, and then have a look at what other things that per those people bought. Um, so it's almost like an open-ended pattern match. And um, we're trying to make a, a, a suggestion for a product that somebody should buy, perhaps a, a web page they should look at, or any other things that fit that pattern. Uh, and the idea here is that we think that this will give more useful no, answers to the user. Uh, and that, that query is maybe reasonably simple. We're just going out two hops, but perhaps we could do something more complicated where we're going out by three or four hops. And that's where graphs uh, work quite well, for doing those sort of complicated uh, traversal queries. Moving across, we've got the graph analytics approach. So remember, this is the one where we're looking at the entire graph to try and find out um, something about it. And we'll often be using this for offline analysis. Uh, and it could be that we're doing some sort of pathfinding or search query where we're trying to say, okay, find me the best path from one train station to another perhaps. Uh, or it could be a more centrality based approach where we're trying to say, okay, tell me what's the most important Twitter user in this subgraph of the uh, of the tw Twitter social network. Or perhaps we're just trying to find groups. Like can we find the Near4j community uh, off, based on the tweets that people are doing? Um, it could be link prediction. So maybe we're trying to work out like what, what two people are likely to become followers or friends with each other in future based on what activities happen so far. Uh, or maybe we're just trying to do something similarity based where we're trying to say which people are similar to each other so that we can make some recommendations based on that similarity. Uh, so let's just work through a, a, an example. So this is a retail recommendations one. So we've got like a graph here. It's a bit small, but hopefully we'll give you the general idea. So perhaps we, one way we could we could use graph algorithms on this would be to find the connect components. Uh, we could be to use the connect components algorithm, to try and identify unique users. So perhaps there, there are some duplicates in there that we want to try and get rid of. Uh, or it could be the page rank algorithm is helpful for working out like what are the most, where are the transaction volumes occurring in the graph. Uh, or maybe we want to det detect customer segmentation based on the topology of the graph, and we could use the Levain algorithm to do this. Uh, and then finally, yeah, again, for finding similarity, like fi finding purchasing similarity, the Jacquard algorithm might be a good one to use there. And uh, we can feed those graph algorithms, the answers of those algorithms, into a graph feature engineering technique. Uh, and so the idea here is that we're using those features that we've got from a graph to try and improve the accuracy of a traditional machine learning model. And so we call this graph feature engineering. Uh, and so we're probably be going to be combining that technique with some sort of tabular, like fairly flat properties that we've got from maybe another database. And then we're going to we're, we're working off the idea that if we add in these graph features, maybe we get a better uh, a better classified than if we just use the the normal t uh, tabular features. Uh, moving on to the uh, to the next one, so graph embedding. So this is the idea that instead of manually constructing those features like we've done in the previous section, we're going to try and generate you a whole set of features automatically. So that's what a graph embedding approach allows us to do. And the idea here is that we're translating the graph into a fixed length vector of some specific size, uh, and it wants to try and preserve the topology as much as possible. Uh, and we could then, as the same, use those features in a machine learning approach, uh, or alternatively, we could use them as part of a similarity comparison. Uh, and then finally, on the right hand side, this is more of a future one, and uh, this is graph native learning. And so there's a lot, there's research papers in this area. And the idea here is that can we just keep the graph as it is instead of like extracting some features out as we've done in the previous two sections, can we keep it exactly as a graph and, and do our learning directly on there? Uh, and so that's the end of this uh, video where we've looked at the applications of graph data science and we've had a look at the evolution of those techniques. Uh, in the next video, we're going to start to look at some specific categories of graph algorithm. 